Hello, world. Let's see how many people are in there. Okay, we are live with Way Up North and me, Mark Riley. Hello to everybody who's just uh, entered. Um, we're going to do a session on video editing for photographers. Um, I'm going to make it quite simple. Uh, we are going to just go through the process and I'm going to show you the way I handle it and it's going to be pretty easy <laughs> unless of course uh, you have absolutely no idea about this but I'm doing this from a photographer's perspective so if everybody can just first of all let me know if you can hear me if the feed is okay uh, you can use the chat. Hello, everybody. I've seen people from Spain, from Germany, from the UK, Romania, Singapore. Okay. Just let me know if you have any problems. We have Cole as well looking into the chat. So uh, you can let him know if there are any, any issues whatsoever. Um, good. Sounds good. All right. So... A little introduction. Um, my name is Mark Riley, as I've said. I live in Greece. I work here as well. Uh, I am both a photographer and a videographer, and I do weddings, uh, among other things. And I also shoot and uh, photos and videos at the same time. So I know the mindset of a photographer, and basically, it's very similar doing video two photos. So the workflow is, is pretty similar. Um, I'm going to be using Final Cut Pro, but any video editor will do. And you can get, uh, if you're on Mac, for example, you have uh, iMovie, which is a free one, which is different to Final Cut Pro. Um, or you can get something like uh, Adobe Premiere, um, or there's a free version of, um, oh, remind me what it's called now. It's actually a, a color grading program, but it's um, it's now become a full video editor. Um, DaVinci Resolve, exactly. Thank you, Cole. So you can use DaVinci Resolve and try it for free. Um, the reason I use Final Cut Pro is because it's made by Apple and I use it on Macs. So that means that they updated to work together with the um, with the system, with the uh, the environment. So that's why I know that it's going to be working all the time. Very frequently, if you're using other programs and there's an update in the system, there might be problems, there might be issues, plugins not working. So that's why I use it. I've been using it for about 10, 15 years. So I know that I can handle this a little bit, but let me show you how I work things. Now, first of all, I have to get my mouse to de-click. My trackpad seems to have these little nibs at the back, and sometimes it doesn't work. There we go. I need to get myself a new trackpad. Okay. So now, um, just as a little introduction, I was listening uh, recently to a podcast by Roger Deakins, who's a cinematographer, um, and he was speaking with the, the director, Sam Mendes. For those who know him, he did American Beauty, Skyfall, 1917. Uh, and he was asked whether his background of theatre director, where he came from, um, uh, was helpful or was it problematic in going into making movies. So I'm telling you this because it's to help you get into the mindset of photographer going to, into video. Um, and his answer was, uh, do you think in sequential images? That's the first thing you have to ask yourself. Can you cut a scene together in your head uh, and how things fit together to create this chain that is a movie? Because one good shot is not enough. It uh, has to all fit together, everything. Uh, and that's something that you don't know until you try it. So from a photographer's point of view, you already do that because most wedding photographers um, do that when they create the gallery or create an album. And making a video is basically the same. You just have to put the images together. Uh, and unless you're creating a music video uh, without a narrative, you're creating a story with an ambient 
with ambient sounds and dialogue. Um, so you're basically putting together the same kind of story as you would with pictures. The anxiety most photographers have um, stems from the fear of complexity, um, the fear of complexity that to record video, to record audio, um, piece it together in a strange software and uh, get it exported. But, but half of these things you already know how to do. It's just a different software. And with every new software, there's a learning curve, obviously. But there's so much out there on YouTube that can help you as well. Uh, so we're not going to get into exactly how you work with the software. I'm just going to give you a basic run through of how my workflow is. Um, and the other thing that is quite intimidating is uh, for people when they see benchmark videos like um, photo videographers like Villare, Tim Twinum or Twinum, um, Maru Films, uh, whose footage you're actually going to see in this. Um, they have reached such a certain level of expertise that you can uh, use a lot of visual trickery. Um, for example, hyperlapses or jump cuts or flashbacks and forward and blended overlays and stuff like that. And that can be a bit intimidating if you're watching that and you're thinking, how, how would I make something like that? So uh, the, the basic thing is that you can use it at a linear timeline, uh, meaning in the sense of a wedding, for example, present the, the, the preparation, then the ceremony, and then the party. And you're still communicating the same story as you would with, with, with photographs, which mostly is just as effective narratively and emotionally. Uh, and that's ultimately what you want to do. You want to create an emotive reaction with your video. So this is what you as a creative person aims for. And so don't be intimidated by the software or some of the amazing videos out there because there's a lot of stuff you don't need to know when you start to do this. If you're into it, then it will reveal itself down the line. Uh, but for now, the basics are really quite simple. You have a camera. It has a video mode. You can shoot clips, transfer them to your hard drive as you would with your images. Um, start up a video editor like Final Cut Pro X. Start a new project, import your clips, select your favorites, drop them onto a timeline, adjust the transitions, add some music to your cut, and when you're happy with it, export it and upload it, upload it to Vimeo or YouTube. Um, so that, it's pretty quite simple, actually. So if you're a little bit overwhelmed right now, don't worry, we'll get through this. Um, we have a little under an hour today. Uh, Cole and I are, had this idea to show you the process uh, of making a short video. And we have clips, uh, we have footage made by Remy, Remy Schouten from uh, Maru Films. Uh, in Kiruna, in the north of Sweden, where Cole did a shoot. So he'll, he'll be the uh, protagonist of this. Um, so I'm going to go through that. Um, and I'm not going to be stopping to answer any questions, but you will be able to ask questions in the Q&A part of the webinar, and then I'll get back to those towards the end. Um, Right, now, the first thing to tell you is that there are three time-consuming elements to editing the video. Um, the first you'll be very familiar with, and that's selection. You have to go through all the footage and see which ones would work. And then you make a selection of those which you're going to import. Um, or you can import everything, and then I'll show you how I select favorite parts of those clips. Uh, the second is choosing music, uh, whether it's instrumental, background music, or a song for the montage. Uh, since most of the time you're making videos for public view viewing, you need to use royalty-free music um, because if you put Beyonce, the copyright bots on YouTube and Instagram will immediately kill that. Um, so as all editors know, you, you spend hours going through online music licensing services like Musicbed or Soundstripe to find tracks that suit your video, the, the feel of it. Um, so I've already selected a piece of music since we only have an hour. And the third is color grading. So that's the last tweaks that you make 
to make sure that the colors are on par. So we don't have too much time of this, but luckily Remy's footage is quite good and consistent with uh, white balance and so on. So if you have any questions at this moment, uh, as I said, I'm gonna look at the Q&A. You can ask questions there, um, but at the moment, I'm just gonna go into the video editor. There we go. Now I'm going to share my screen. Um, let me just check one thing with you because I'm on camera, so I'm now going to share my screen. Here we go. Right. So you should be able to see Final Cut Pro now. And this very basically is uh, the setup here. And that's my trackpad not working again. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is the area where you have the clips. So I would in, click on this to import footage, um, be it from a hard drive here. Um, for example, I've had them already in the library here. But that has already been done then they get imported to this part here and you can see all the clips as imported right um the first thing you would need to do is to create a new library that library is like a collection um it's like a catalog in lightroom it's basically the place that contains all of your files for the video, for the project. Uh, within that library, you have, and let me open that for you, uh, what is called a, an event, um, which is this one. And within that, there is a project, which is this one that you start, and the project is basically your video which will be on the timeline here. Now, I don't know where my timeline is going down. There we go, all right. All right, guys, I am having issues with my trackpad. Give me just one second so that I switch over to the, <laughs> I'm gonna switch over to the mouse. These are technical issues, unforeseen. Let me just find the dongle. There we go. And I'm gonna, Eject this one. I'll be right with you. There, okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Is everybody still here? Okay. <laughs> right. Back to the screen. Okay. Now, so in Final Cut Pro, we, there we go. So this is your library with all your clips. I'm gonna hide this again. And what I've done is gone through each of these clips to select parts that I would like to use. And as you can see, there's a little green line above these clips. And this is basically my favorites of these clips. So what I would basically do is hover over the, with the mouse over this, and then press the space bar to play this clip. And if I think, mm, that's nice, I will rewind a little bit, go over here, and then I would press I for in. That's the in point. And continue to play until I reach that part there. Go back a bit with the cursor arrows on the keyboard. 
and press O, and then I have that part of the clip that I like. And then I would just tap F, and as you can see, that has now become a favorite clip. So we've imported them, we've done our selection, and then we have the favorites. Now, the, the reason I do it this way is that so that I don't have to keep going back to all the clips and searching for that bit that I liked. And then I go up here and select favorites. And then we have all the favorites that I've selected, all the clips. And as you can see, there's, there's quite a lot there. But there's another level of selection that you can make because we don't have ratings like in Lightroom or Capture One. Um, but what we can do is add keywords. So I've got a list of keywords here. And as you can see, I've got highlights, gloves, and B-roll. Um, the reason it's gloves because we're making this little video for a glove company that Cole has been working with. And you can see one of them here, for example. These are crud gloves. And so I've made a list of keywords within the event, gloves and highlights. Now, these are just a few that I've made. So I'm going to go straight back into all my favorites. And we're going to start putting clips on the timeline. So let's quickly go through everything. Now, the first thing that I'm looking for is an establishing shot. And I like the fact that this was a journey going up to Kiruna in the north of Sweden. So we have some basically some establishing shots. And I like this because it's quite moody. Passing trucks. So I'm going to use one of these clips. Let's see. Let's take that one. There's an endpoint there. I can, within my favorites, make an endpoint. And take that. And then I can press E on the keyboard. Learn the keyboard shortcut because they're going to really speed up your workflow. Or, as you can see here, you've got these parts that say you can drop them onto the timeline. Um, e stands for drop them to the, the end of the selection. So basically every clip will go on to the next, after the next clip. So we have one clip here already, which is a good establishing shot, I think. Now, now I'm going to do one more thing before that is that I'm going to go to the beginning of the timeline and I'm going to add a little gap. And this gap I was used to kind of ease in to the video. Now you can either start it just like that, but it's a little bit sudden. So what I'm going to do is add a transition here. And if you look over on this side, this is where we have a list of transitions. And the transitions come in all forms and sizes, but don't get too crazy because, you know, this is where things go to from nice to too much. So the ones I usually use are cross dissolve. So you can take the cross dissolve either by double clicking it, having this selected, this cut here, or drag and drop on there. So now we have a cross dissolve, meaning you go from black and you fade in to the clip. Very good. Now, how are we doing? Is everybody clear so far? Are we good? Okay, great. Now, let's go on with the editing. And I'm back in Final Cut Pro here. The next step will be the next step will be to add another clip here. And we've got our road.
and we're in Sweden. So why not? This is a car standing still, so I don't want to use that because it doesn't follow on that. So I'm going to add this one here just as a simple reminder of yes, we're in Sweden. It sets the place where you are. Apologies for the moving around. So going back to the beginning again, we're on the road. And we have a flag there. Okay, very good. I'm going to cut that short by just pulling that with the, with the mouse, click, drag, and hold. Okay, next. Here's our protagonist. Um, and I just want to know if you are hearing the audio from this video. So has any audio been coming through from the video so far or not? Let's see. OK. There. Adding some audio to that. Now we have coal here. I don't think we should uh, wander too far into the snow. <laughs> Instead of that, we're going to use. I don't think so. You're my co-pilot here. <laughs> this maybe. So maybe we use this instead of the flag as the next clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this from there to there. And then I actually, no, it doesn't follow. So I'm going to delete that again. It looks nice, but it doesn't make any sense. But this is a clip that we can use now. There we go. OK. Um, excuse me, I closed, closed that there for a moment. OK. Looking with his gloves, and then we can follow that up by a clip of this. And as you can hear, there's a bit of a, a noise there. So what I do there is I make a transition, but for audio, so that you don't have that problem. Then we have a nice clip there, which I think is one of my highlights. It's a bit shaky, but there's something we can do about that. So I'm going to add that again, pressing E to the timeline. And that's a bit of a jerk at the beginning of that clip, so I'm going to this is basically just to hold the mouse and drag it. There we go. And the end of that is a little bit off. So what we can do is go frame by frame and decide we're going to do it there. Command and there's um, a bracket, the right bracket or the left bracket. Once you select the clip, you can do command, right bracket. And of course, today it's not working. So I'm just going to drag it there. And pull it in a little bit more. Now, to stabilize this a little bit, you've got this button here called stabilization. So I'm going to click on that in the menu. And as you can see here, it is basically calculating that up here. And it says it has done its work, and it has stabilized it a bit. So you can use that. Also, take a look at this. Uh, 
this has been shot at 60 frames per second, meaning it's a little bit more, it's more frames per second than what our, our project is. Our project, and I didn't say this at the beginning, uh, I create project in, um, as you can see here, 1920 by 1080, that is uh, full HD. It's not 4K, but if you have 4K footage, which um, Remy has done somehow, then you can even uh, put that on the same timeline and then crop it so you, that you don't lose resolution. But my timeline is 25 frames per second. Um, and so if you have something that is more frames per second, this is a little bit technical, but then you can use that to slow-mo. So you can slow it down. I press um, Command plus R, which retimes this clip. And then I can drag it to make it slower. As it says here, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm slowing it down to 78%. So now we've got that clip in a slower pace, which looks very nice. Okay, let's find another clip that can go on from there. Here we go. We've got Cole again doing his thing. And we've gone too far there, so let's go back a little bit. Play this. And that makes a nice sequence. But I'm going to cut it there. Again, this is, uh, that's option, close bracket. Or as I said, you can just drag it to cut the end of that clip off. And then we go to another one of this couple here. Just work. Just work, he says. That one's too shaky for me. So I'm going to look at this one. No. We can use that as a close up now. So you can see here the sequence. Except this doesn't make sense to me because here you can see he's holding the camera sideways and there it's the other way around. So I'm going to insert a clip here. Let's say I'm going to take this one. Uh, and for inserting a clip between two clips, you use W. And that, for me, makes more sense as a sequence. There we go. Now I'm going to move on a little bit because we're already half an hour in. And I'm skimming over everything here. And I could imagine that in the final video, we could have some dialogue going over this. No, that doesn't make any sense. So I will delete it, take that out. Great. So I'm just basically making a rough cut of the visual narrative that I want to get. Uh, these are all too dark. But here's a nice moment where he's actually, they were shooting and trying to get the northern lights, but we have better clips of that coming up later. So I'm not going to use that as, as yet. Um, just to get an idea, this is what the weather was like. And they're going into the hotel there. So it's not something I want to use right now. What we can do is go to a different scene. And I quite like that one. We'll see why. Okay, now I might choose to leave it there. 
the darkness. I can get to you. I can make you a little. The darkness, it can get to you. So I'm putting those two clips there. The darkness, I can get to you. I can make you a little. Can make you a little. A little bit crazy. A little bit crazy. There you go. <laughs> so I might use this, I might not use this, but I like this. A little bit crazy. Just to have a little bit of dialogue, so you you understand what it's like to have dialogue in there. Um, yes, I do do all this before choosing the music, and the reason I do that, let's go back to the camera. Uh, the reason I do that is because um, if you are making a music video, yes, you know what music you're going to use, but even then, it's best to get your clips, your rough cut sorted before you add the music. Because if you need to add something that you've forgotten, then it's a big hassle to have to change everything because then it doesn't fit within the music anymore. So do your rough cut first, then add the music. Um, let's continue that now. And I'm going back to the screen, Final Cut Pro. And we have a, a different situation here. This is at the, the Ice Hotel. But I just want a, a clip like that to follow that up so that we don't immediately go into the next day. And I might choose to do that, or I might choose to do a fade out or a cross fade. But we'll take a look at that afterwards. Um, here we're at another day, and I like this as a an opening. So there, I think I might do a cross fade. So this is the fade to color crossfade and basically it's set at black right now and you can see that when you click on the transition it says color so you could change this to any color but usually you stick to black so you could go like that from night or dawn today and this is at the ice hotel so I'm going to then have Cole with his nice warm gloves again, shooting that scene. Good. And then we want to see what he's seeing or get some motion. This is a nice shot there. Yeah, I like that. And we will continue. So basically all the time I'm just clicking on this clip here in the browser, and then when I've got a clip that I like, E on the keyboard to insert that. Okay, that might not make too much sense, but... Whichever way the wind is blowing. <laughs> Very, that's, that's deep, I like that. Whichever way the wind is blowing. But no, I'm going to put that clip and take this one out. It's it's really that simple. Once you get the hang of it, it's like, yeah, clip, clip. <clears throat> like that, don't like that. Let these guys go up. Okay, we don't want too much of them because it's not about them really. It's about this action here. Not necessarily the camera. We're talking about the gloves. We're gonna to to focus on the gloves. So I'm gonna choose a clip that, there we go, that's nice. I'm gonna put that in there. And then click and drag this one. 
great. And then I can check on my timeline where we are. We're at 46 seconds right here. So I'm going to move on because I don't want this video to be too long. I'm going to use this as my next one because we're inside a tent. Yeah, there we go. And that's nice. We can do that as well. Maybe have a close up shot of the, the fire there. Very good, because we want warmth. Is this is a story between cold and warm? These are nice shots, but I don't necessarily want to use them. And this is a totally different scene, so we're going to move on from there. Where I want to go now is the ride with the dogs. So that's a nice clip. It's a little bit too long, but I can shorten it here. Move back a little bit. And we need another transition here. So the great thing about doing these transitions, and now it says there's not enough extra media, meaning the clip is not long enough to put this transition, but it will trim it for you. So I say create transition, and it's going to cut that a little bit. OK, good. And we're going on a ride now. And this is another great shot from Remy. He's sitting at the front. I'm going to append that to that. I'm not going to go back and check that now. I'm just going to continue. Yeah, they're having a lot of fun there. I'll just play this for you, but I'm not going to use it. I want you. <laughs> just to get an idea what it's like to shoot a couple. There. We have the dogs. So at the moment, I just want something like that. And here we get into our highlights. So I'm going to use one of these. What have we got? Dogs here. Yeah, that's nice. Add that as the next one. Or this one. Let me just go back to see which one I like the most. I can increase the space on my timeline to see what's happening here. Now, need to go back a little bit more. Hope everything is clear for you out there. Now, that, see, that doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to take this one out because the dogs are running and you want to continue them running. Now, I'm just going to double click on this clip here. Sorry, let me just bring that up into the middle a little bit. Because we have sound. And I want to extend that sound a little bit. So if I double click on this, the audio will come down from the clip. And then I can extend the audio. Even though I'm not using the video of this, I can extend the audio and then fade that out to have a crossfade in audio. Make it even a little bit longer. And then I grab that little thing there and make a crossfade in audio. Now yeah, that's good. I like that. OK. And we'll add that clip to the end there. Noise. There she is. There she is. OK, good. I'm just going to add a quick sound transition here. Yes. And this volume is a little bit low, so I'm going to increase it to 5 decibels by clicking and holding this audio line here and moving it up. There she is. It's a bit better. And then we have another.
classic Remy shot here, but I'm going to move out of my highlights because I need another clip in between there, moving down a little bit. Great. So I'm going to probably choose this one. And I need a little bit of a, yes. it's a bit wobbly that clip. So I'm going to, again, go over here to my information and click on stabilization to stabilize that clip. Usually you do that at the end when you go through it, but I'm doing it quickly for you now so that we have a finished yes. product at the end. There's a bit of a wobble at the beginning of that, so I'm going to go there and cut it by doing option open bracket. That's very nice. We don't want any audio on that part. I'm just going to have music, so I'm going to lower that so we don't hear the audio from there. And then I'm going to go back to another clip of call shooting. No, we need this one. So I'm going to append that to the end of the clip. Very nice, that's the same one. Good. Move down a little bit further. Guys, can you face me? Yeah, I like that. Guys, can you face me? Some more dialogue. Guys, can you face me? In fact, this is a different location because they're back at the uh, hotel now. And this is where they're creating their northern lights. So let's have the couple pointing up at the northern lights there. It's me. Face me, pointing up the northern lights. And back to Cole. Getting a bit of a lag here. I hope everything is still okay with the stream. Going away, man. And then we go to the screen here to see what is showing up. That's nice. But what I want to do here is because we start with the actual picture and then go to the dark screen, I want to reverse that. So how do I do that? I go over here to this little timer and there's a drop down menu. And if you go down, it says reverse clip. And what that does is that it basically reverses it. So now we go from here to revealing the picture, which is what I wanted. Very nice. Let's go back to the couple for this sequence. Oh, you guys are lucky. There. I'm going to cut that, the end of that off, and we're going to go back to the screen because he's on a long time, yeah. a long exposure. Yeah. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to reverse this clip. Reverse clip. Obviously, the audio is going to be reversed as well. Hey. Hey. No, you see, hey. that that doesn't work for me. So I'm going to Command Z, which you should know means cancel, undo. I'm just going to end that clip there. And then I want a bit of a reaction to the picture or... This is a better, this is a better clip. So, so I need to add something there. The thing is with the video, because you're not, you can't do long exposure on the video. You can't see the Northern Lights. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just skimming here. I'm gonna insert this between these two clips. So I'm going to, Use my cursor keys. The up and down cursor keys will skip between clips. 
and then I'm going to push W on the keyboard to insert that clip. There we are. It's a bit wobbly at the beginning, so I'm going to crop it. But that doesn't make any sense now because he's going to show them a picture with both of them there. And I believe I don't have a clip of that selected. Yes, we do it there. So that would make more sense. These are nice visual things, but I might decide to put them later. So, okay, let's say instead of this one, I want this one. So I can drag and drop and put it over there and it'll say replace. I will click replace. And that goes on for a bit, so I don't want that. Just a short part of that clip. And then we need something else in between there because we need a better flow. What can we put there? Let's put this one for now. She's coming to see. Maybe even a vertical. Maybe even a vertical All right, I need a bit of a transition there in the audio. Maybe even a vertical. Maybe then. Cut that at the end, and then we get the reaction. Whoa! That is insane! Yeah, that's good stuff. Nice. Wow, that's insane. I tap the O for out point because the beginning of the clip is immediately is automatically the in point. And then I got this part that's in yellow, goes to the end of that. Wow! That is insane! Yeah, that's good stuff. There we go. Now we've got some. Um, a few more clips here, which are in daylight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the beginning. And I'm going to look at a place where I can insert that where we had more daylight. Which is in this area. Because here you can actually see the brand name on the glove. So even though this is not the same, you can see the brand name there as well, but I'm going to, for now, overlay that, which you can also do. Uh, it'll stick to the timeline. Well, yeah. Yeah, I don't want him to say, well, yeah. So I'm going to use that part instead of that, and then I'm going to pull that back. And this is where you see it's important to put the music afterwards, because if I had put the music already, it would have been cut to the rhythm somewhere there, and then we would have gone into trouble. I would have had to extend this somehow. But now this is fine. Okay, I like that. So what I'm going to do now is right click on here and select overwrite this clip to primary storyline, and it's basically going to push it down into the timeline right there. Uh, we've got a floating audio. I'm going to delete that. Uh, he looks a bit puzzled at the end, so I'm going to just crop it to there and click on the info. I'm going to extend this just a little bit, 80%, make it a little bit slower, have a bit more impact there. Good. And then we come to the drone shots. So the question now is, where do we put the drone shots? Um, well, how about with the dogs? Just before the dogs come in, let's go back here. Let's take this transition away by putting, uh, tapping on delete or backspace, basically. Backspace. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to select one clip to put. This is coal.
getting his camera ready to go sledding. Let's choose that one. I'll put W to insert that there. But this clip is now a little bit too long. We don't want all of that. Now I can zoom out of this timeline by pressing Command minus, so I get a bit of more overview. But that, for me, is not dynamic enough, so I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to use this one instead from this point here. W to put that in. That is nice for me. But then we go to the dogs, but I want a different drone shot first. A bit more landscape. Here we go. That's nice. Um, we don't need all of that. Great. Use that W to put in there. We get a bit of emotion, motion and emotion. Make that a little bit longer. And in fact, I'm going to take out these dogs because we've got motion, so I don't want them to be... There we go. That's nice. Good. So, basically, I've got a beginning, a middle, and an end. That's insane. That's insane. How do you like me now? Uh, and we're going to finish with uh, another drone shot, just because we have it, and it's wonderful. <laughs> And what we can do is extend the audio a little bit. Oh my god! Great, and we end with a fade out, which is another cross dissolve. Boom. So that's basically our video clip. So we have almost 10 minutes left. I'm just going to check in on everybody. Um, Okay, so let's take a look at our rough cut. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. Here we go. The road, the Swedish flag, establish where we are. We're doing a photo shoot. That clip is a bit long for me. I'll get back to that afterwards. On the road again. The darkness. I can get to you. Just yeah. Feeling a little bit crazy. I don't like that transition at all. So I'm just going to take that out. Take this clip out. And we have to go back to that one clip that we had there. That was too long for me. I'm going to shorten that. The darkness. I can get to you. It can make you a little bit crazy. Okay, we can shorten that as well. And what we're going to do is move that to there. And that's where I'm going to put my cross dissolve. That works much better for me. Okay, good. Let's continue watching this. That's nice. Okay, we do not need that clip inside. Superfluous. Take it out. Good, that motion is much better. Get him shooting the gloves. Um, yeah, there we go. Wow. Okay, I'm not sure about that, but for now we'll leave it. Make that a little bit shorter. Yeah, there we go. Because wow. visually it's quite nice. And then we got this shot here, that shot there. Yeah. A little bit too long. Shorten that. This is awesome. 
It's awesome. Yes, Remy. <laughs> but it's too long. So we're going to shorten awesome, that. Man. This is awesome, man. We don't need that audio in there, so we're going to shorten this again. Shorten it a bit more. And you'll see that there's a difference in lighting there. So very quick fix is to select this clip, then match color, and then I can select this clip and apply match. So at least we have a little bit of con continuity there and consistency. Of course, that doesn't fit now as well, so I'm going to have to do the same there. Usually I would go into the color grading tab and dial that in much better but we don't have time for that now that's nice yes, yes. guys can you face me it's kind of going away oh you guys are lucky okay so we actually do see a little bit of the northern lights there so i'm going to go in to the color editor here and increase the shadows. No, that's not going to work. Maybe the midtones. No, maybe the highlights. Ah, a little bit. Maybe give it a bit of a green edge to it. It's very tricky with the northern lights. Oh, you guys are lucky. But we get an idea there. Um, that is superfluous. I'm going to take that out. Good, good, Maybe even. a bit too long, going to cut that. Maybe even a vertical talk, eh? Wow, that is insane. Yeah, that's good stuff. Oh, my God. Great, that's our clip. So how much? <laughs> we have 1 minute 35 of clip time and three more minutes to this webinar. So I'm quickly going to go into my music here and i'm looking at the time and i'm going to choose a piece of music that is the same um ren tails let's use this for now i'm going to drag and drop that onto the timeline that should be fine i need to zoom out Oh, sorry, that's plus. All right, bring that to the beginning there. And let's see what we have. All right, let's see. It, but it fades out a little bit too soon. So I'm going to take out some bits um, here. Sorry, fireplace. Can take you out. Very nice visually, but it doesn't add to the story. I'm going to take that clip out as well. Wow! Great. I'm going to. 
just add a quick audio transition there. Wow, that's insane. Yeah, that's good stuff. Oh my God. And the last thing we're going to do is add a quick title over that. I use the basic title uh, right here. Drop it over the top there. And we write CRUD. Um, usually I just put their, um, their logo, but for now we'll use this. Oh my god, yeah, that's good stuff. Oh my god. And there we go. That's it. There is your video. So I hope that was helpful. <laughs> uh, I am going to go back to the camera now. Woo! That was intense. So um, my camera is not on or it's too dark. So I think. I'm going to have to switch over to the other camera right now um, because that's not working. Bear with me, camera. Let's see, on a wedding day, you record in 50 frames per second, or are you switching between 25 and 50? Uh, yes, um, you, I basically stay at 25 frames per second, and the reason I do 25 frames per second is because I've noticed that it matches the audio. If you're at a wedding and you're at the party and they're playing their first dance, then you use the, um, the audio of that dance, but sometimes you need to put the actual song underneath it. And I found that if you shoot in a different frames per second, the audio is just in a different pitch. And so it doesn't fit. So I've, I've stuck with 25 frames per second. That's for normal um, video. If I want to go slow-mo, then you go up higher with your frames per second, 50 frames per second, or 100 frames per second, indeed. And then from Johanna, do you do all this before you have chosen? We've answered that one. OK, good. Um, anything else? You would like to know if there are any other people still here. Um, the last thing I want to say is that uh, this is a very quick overview of how I put together a video. Um, the, the last bit would be to um, brush it up a little bit and then let's go back to Final Cut Pro so that you can see this. Just basically go here to export file and just look at the settings make sure that it's at 1080 and all of these you don't need to pay too much attention to um, as long as 1920 by 1080 and then next and then i would basically put that in there save and it'll export that and then I would upload that to Vimeo or YouTube. Uh, so that that basically is, the, that's it. There's a lot more to it, of course, but uh, those are the basics. And I hope that I've given you an idea of um, the possibility that you have with your camera if you shoot a video. It's basically the same as the pictures. You just have to learn how to use the editing program. Okay. Um, that's all for now. If you want to ask me any other questions, um, feel free to do that. Um, get in touch with me online. I'm on Instagram. Um, I'm not on Facebook. Uh, you can send me an email at uh, markreilly.com. And uh, you can also get uh, in touch with me through Way Up North because uh, we're good friends with Cole. I want to say thank you to Cole for giving me this opportunity. And uh, thank you to my kids for behaving in the background. My dog is somewhere as well sleeping. So that's all for now. Um, hope to see you soon. Hope to see you in Copenhagen. Um, everybody stay safe. Drink a lot of water. Wash your hands. And um, 
See you soon.